Hey everybody, I'm the Drink Pro. Today we're drinking Old Carter Bourbon batches five and six. Hey everybody, Kyle the Drink Pro here with you yet again. Thank you so much for watching. Please continue to like, subscribe, share the video with your friends, join me on the Patreon. Everything you do to help the channel is so greatly appreciated. Thank you guys so, so much. Today we've got a fun one. I'm comparing two bourbons that are just on my desk today. Brand new, unopened. We'll talk about that in a minute. But it is the Old Carter Bourbon, batches five and six. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but batch six here has a little special treat on the side and the top. This was actually autographed by Mark and Sherry Carter. Big shout out to the Carters, much appreciated. It's a really cool thing to have. I got to meet them and spend some time with them. They are wonderful people. Uh, I'm going to try my best not to have that influence my review. I really do try to be objective on this channel. You know, I did say I didn't really care for one of their whiskeys that was freshly opened, so this is kind of a fun experiment, uh, not just to try whiskeys that are freshly opened from them when I might not have preferred one in the past, but because I'm going to be opening these fresh, it'll give me an opportunity to talk about the neck pour. And that can affect the flavor a lot because whiskey aerates when you have opened the bottle. Now, people use the term oxidized. I don't like that term because what's actually happening is the alcohol is dissipating from the liquid itself. That's a little bit different than oxidization. Um, there's good science suggesting that oxidization doesn't actually happen in a bottle. There might be some debate about that, but I think the best explanation for what's happening when a whiskey is losing its place in a bottle as the bottle gets lower and lower, that empty space is filling with alcohol that's sort of dissipating off of the main liquid. That's why it's changing its profile. That's why it becomes different over time. Now, I will say these are lower proof than some of the other things that I was tasting in my previous video. I believe the batch five is 115.1 proof, and then batch six, I think is 106.5 proof. So these are both under 60% alcohol, which means I'm expecting a little bit less of an ass kicking right out of the gate, but I'm still going to give them time to aerate. So I'll show you, I'm going to crack them live here. One of the things I like to do is use a box cutter and cut along the label. That doesn't really do anything, and you have to be kind of careful not to cut the cork. But I like doing it because it makes the lines much cleaner. So when I open the whiskey, you can see it's much cleaner lines on those labels. It doesn't have anything dangling. Now, one of the things you might notice right away is that the bottles are a little bit different. And I just saw this when I sort of brought them out for this video today. Batch six is a little bit uh, thinner and taller than batch five. Batch five is sort of wider bottle, shorter and stouter, just a little bit. And the bases are a little bit different, but also the front labels are a little bit different. The color scheme here changed slightly. So they're still working to tweak their branding a little bit, which I think is smart. I'm glad they're trying to figure it out and find exactly what they like. These people are precise. They know what they want and they fight hard to get it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of each of these into glass. Now that I've got these whiskeys poured into the glass, I'm gonna give them about 10 minutes to aerate. So we're gonna pause the video here. I'll come back, it'll just seem like a split second for you guys, but I'm gonna take a full 10 minutes on the clock. I'm gonna time it just to make sure that the whiskey in these glasses has a proper time to aerate, to get used to the environment. I wanna give them the best chance of being as good as possible right off of the cork pop. So let's see what happens. All right, I've given these whiskeys a chance to aerate. Let's go ahead and give them a taste and put this blade away because I'm very good at hurting myself when there aren't blades out on the table. <laughs> Last thing I need is an injury uh, <laughs> while I'm drinking whiskey. So I would typically, I think, go from batch five to batch six just to stay in numerical order, but the proof on batch six is lower. The hype around batch five is higher. I'm gonna go ahead and go in the reverse order just for uh, the purposes of my palate here. One other thing I think I'm gonna do is nose both of them and then taste both of them. So, although I will be starting with batch six, I'm definitely gonna taste uh, batch six only after nosing batch five as well. Wow, so batch six on the fresh crack, very minty, lots of oak, and incredibly sweet, really sweet cherry. This is an unbelievably complex nose. I'm getting licorice, leather, mint, Definite oakiness, maybe even a herbal tea or herbal tea. 
I don't know why I said herbal. Herbal. This is a really notable toffee note as well. The sweetness is toffee. I've gotten a lot of different kinds of sweetness. I always talk about caramel and vanilla, but man, toffee isolated is very unique. Lots of tropical fruit, mango, orange, lemon, limes, blackberry in there as well. I already mentioned the cherry. The cherry is actually sort of becoming like a cherry cough syrup, more of a chemical cherry, less of a sweet cherry after being open for a minute. It's so cool to nose this because it keeps changing. It started out minty, then it became almost this leathery tea vibe, and then it's starting to become fruity, and now it's transitioning from the fruit into this like herbal woodiness, almost a nutty woodiness. The almonds are starting to come through. I'm getting a little cereal note, which is interesting. And the woodiness on this is sort of like older plywood. It's like plywood that's been sitting around for a while. And by that I mean it doesn't have that fresh sharpness and it doesn't have that old bogged down untreated wood. It doesn't smell like the chemical treatment, but it does smell kind of like wood that uh, hasn't been used in a while, but isn't rotting. Oh man. And now the flowers are starting to show up. Man, I could just like list every single note that you have for nosing. It's just crazy how much is packed into this whiskey. And I will say, you know, these are not cheap whiskey. They're, they're, there's no way to make any bones about it. These are $200 plus whiskeys. I think one cost me $200, one cost me $250. And these were not gifts. These were purchases. Um, but it's the kind of thing where it feels wrong to spend that kind of money on a whiskey. And then you put this up to your nose and you go, holy shit, there's so much happening in this. I understand why it's that expensive. And some people might not think that's worth it, and that's fine. You know, you got to buy the products that are right for you. But if you want to understand what $200 can get you in a whiskey, at least on the nose so far, this is where you can look. All right, let's go ahead and nose number five. So let's go ahead and nose number five. Oh, wow. Very different. So number five is a more classic bourbon note, actually. It's a little bit more honey sweet. The, the fruitiness is a little bit less. Interestingly, it's actually a little quieter on the nose. Batch six, as soon as I opened it, was just explosive with all these different notes. But batch five is a little bit more muted. Yeah, the leather's starting to show up, getting a little bit of like a stewed apple component. Baking spice is there. Much more classic notes on this one, vanilla and caramel. Got the honey as well. Am I filming? I hope I'm filming. I should check and see if I'm filming. Good. <laughs> I'm glad I'm filming. It's been a long day, and it's just started. I'm getting a lot more of the baking spices. I think number six, I got a lot more like mint, uh, licorice, um, even some tea notes. Herbal, but less baking spice and more of other kinds of herbal aromatics. But they were never bitter, which is important. A lot of times for me, those present as bitter, and that's unpleasant. This was not bitter, but it was definitely there. Ooh, just a hint of chocolate, just a little bit of chocolate on this. Yeah, there's that honey, that butterscotch. I already mentioned the caramel and vanilla. Yeah, going back to number six after number five, it's way more explosive and fruity. That's crazy. Number five seems relatively tame on the nose in comparison. Oh, you know what? I'm getting that Flintstone vitamins note on number six on the nose. I don't know if it'll taste like that, but I certainly smell it. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, number six is way different than number five. Number five is very classic bourbon notes. Number six is super fruity, and it's got a lot of herbal notes and a lot of different things happening. Let's go ahead and taste number five, and then we'll bounce over to number six. I had that backwards. Let's taste number six, and then we'll go to number five. It's throwing me off, and I'm trying to go in proof order because it typically makes more sense. Even though the nose on this may indicate that six is a little bit harder to deal with than five. <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay let's go ahead and give it a taste see god that's good so i think there's definitely some dickle juice in here um i don't think they disclose where they get their whiskey from uh but i would be shocked if this didn't have some dickle in it it's got that it's got that Flintstone vitamins note that a lot of people are turned off by, but I'll tell you what, to me, it's not nearly as, what's the word, um, minerally as a lot of that dickle juice can be. 
You know it's got that profile, but I'm not bothered by it. I've had other Dickel products that I was pretty bothered by and didn't really care for, but this one, I really like what they're doing with it. It's way sweeter, lots of sweet, soft vanilla and orange. Instead of getting a minerality out of the Flintstone Vitamins characteristic, I get a woodiness. It's oaky, which is interesting. It must be rather old Dickel juice. It spent a lot of time on wood and it gets that oakiness. So you get this sweet, almost candy, almost dusty quality. And then it very quickly turns into this dry uh, American oak with honey over top of it. That's really neat. That's really cool. A little bit of that herbal note is starting to show up a little bit, but it's not minerally, at least not to me. It goes sweet, fruity sugars. Mid palate, you get this light herbal, um, almost, it's not grassy, but it's like, uh, it's, it's like a nondescript herb. It's very uh, gently herbal, almost, uh, almost woody. And then it very quickly goes from that kind of gentle herb into a deep, rich, I want to say dry oakiness, but it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't dry your mouth out. It just has the flavor of dry wood. And then you continue to have the sweet, classic bourbon, vanilla, and caramel flavors into the finish. It kind of feels like you've just eaten a spicy meal on the finish of this. That's very cool. Now, number five has a lot of hype around it, but that could be dangerous. I'm not going to buy into the hype. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. <laughs> that is a very classic bourbon. Like, that's, I understand why the hype's around it, but I may not like it as much as batch six. And here's why. Batch five is just such a standard bourbon profile. And don't get me wrong, I love bourbon. Bourbon's fantastic, and then when it does what it's supposed to do very well, it can be just phenomenal. But this is not nearly as interesting as six. Matter of fact, if you tasted five first, Six might be overwhelming. Five is just doing its thing so well, but it's doing kind of one thing. Six is going 18 different directions and it's so much more complex. Six is a real challenge to your palate. Five is not. Classic vanilla, caramel, super sweet. As I keep tasting it, I might get a hint of cherry in the mid palate, but the finish is really beautiful, woody, sweet. It's a sweet oak all over. Yeah, right front, super caramel. Super honey caramel. I think the hype around five is about the finish. It's got an incredibly long finish. It's toasted oak. It's sweet honey. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. Five is like a classic, classic bourbon. It's just, you know, the, the ideal form of bourbon. But six is like, let me take that and flip it on its head and go the exact opposite way and still make you like it. That's so cool. Um, this is going to be interesting because I think if somebody asked me, would I pay $200 for either of these bottles again? I would probably say no on five and yes on six. And that's not a popular opinion. Several YouTubers have batch five in their top three whiskeys of the year. Um... I'm just not that into the classics, maybe, you know? It, this is just exactly what a bourbon is quote-unquote supposed to be. And that's great. It's doing a great job of a classic bourbon with no flaws that I can pick out. Um, it's a little woodier than I typically go. Uh, it's a little less fruity than I typically go. But it's just really in that lane of beautiful, sweet aromatics, baking spices, hints of nuttiness and woodiness, and then a tingling pepper on the finish. That is just what, like, if you were gonna draw a roadmap of bourbon, five is it. I'm gonna go ahead and taste number six again right now, though, because after that nice little roadmap of number five, I felt like number six was the opposite. So let's go ahead and see again, just to make sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Six is, oh man, the more it's opening up, six is being that dickle juice. That dickle juice is really standing out. If you don't like dickle at all, if you've never found a dickle you liked, watch out for this one. But uh, this to me is like what Dickel juice is supposed to taste like. People find that Flintstone vitamin minerality quality very off-putting, but in the right context, I think it can fit perfectly into a whiskey. And this is, that's kind of what's happening here. Yeah, it's herbal, it's sweet, it's a lot of fruit. Well, if you want classic, classic bourbon, I think number five is the way to go. If you like Dickel or you want something very different or you want to change your mind, 
about that vitamin note in Dickel, you think you don't like that and there's no possible way you'll change your mind, this one might change your mind. Now that might be a big ask at around $200 price point, but give it a shot, guys. I think it's really worth trying because it's so unique, it's so complex, and it's presenting that classic profile of Dickel in a very different light. So I think it's worth checking out. Thank you all so much for joining. Keep drinking like professionals. Cheers.